Welcome to another moment in the Word. I am so joyed that you're joining with me and just meditating in God's Word and seeing what He has to say to us. The passage we're looking at is especially apropos because all of us can identify with the event that occurs in the passage we're looking at. We'll begin at verse 46, and we're going to read through verse 49, and this is in John's Gospel, the fourth chapter. So Jesus came again unto Cana of Galilee, where he had made water wine, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down before my child dies. As we look at this, this is really apropos because you and I and all of us, we all have tribulations and trials in our life, and oftentimes they have to do with physical health. And they sometimes have to do with loved ones, people that are close to us that are sick, some are dying. With COVID, that's certainly the case that causes great concern. How should we pray? And how should we look at the situation that we're in? We'll find lessons of that as we look at this nobleman. So we find, first of all, that Jesus came down again into Galilee. Well, the first word is the word sow. It's connecting. You can think of the word to sow together. It sows what you had looked previously when Jesus was in Samaria. And there, just by speaking the word, a woman comes who was at the well, drawing water, and then tastes of the water that's flowing to eternal life. She then tells everyone in her community at Sychar, and they beseech Jesus for two days to stay with them, and for sure, that's what happens. There were no miracles, no signs, no wonders, but they came to faith in Christ. The healing was internal, not external. But now Jesus leaves there, and he says, verse 44, that a prophet has no honor in his own country. He's going back to his own country. He's going back to the Jewish people because he came first to the Jews. Remember, we find in John chapter 1 that he came to his own and his own did not receive him. We find now that he came again to Cana. It is referenced that this is where the first miracle takes place and there are many that we find they came to see Jesus because of the miracles he performed at Passover in Jerusalem and the miracle that had taken previously changing water to wine in Cana. People come for a healing service. They come for signs and wonders and miraculous display, and that's what had happened here. Here we find that there is a nobleman, and this nobleman comes to um, Jesus because his son is sick unto death. He was so sick that he left his son at Capernaum. Capernaum is about 28 miles away. If he was sick, he probably would have brought his son with him, but he was so sick, he left him home. And he comes to Jesus because of what he had heard and seen. But notice how Jesus responds. And how do we respond? How do we pray when we have a son, a grandchild, or we have a good friend, or somebody in the congregation, or someone we know and care about who is sick? How do we respond? Notice how he did. Then he said, to uh, he, he came, he went to Jesus, and he besought him. The word went is he took action. He left, it was a one time, he went. But the word besought is the same word that we found earlier, where we, in verse 40, find the Samaritans, they besought Jesus, and the word is to beg, plead, to entreat, 
and it is in the imperfect tense, that means that they continue to do it. He now is begging, pleading, and treating Jesus, do something about my son. And so he came, he besought him that he would come down, there are two things this nobleman is asking, that he would come down and that he would heal his son. Now this nobleman, the word itself means a courtier, one who is a part of the court of a king. He is part of a royal entourage. He is a member of a cabinet or an administration of a ruler. He is perhaps used to giving orders. And so when he comes to Jesus, he's giving Jesus orders. He's saying to Jesus, come, come down, heal. He's telling Jesus what to do. Now, isn't that strange? We don't have any illustration in the prior part of this chapter where the woman is telling Jesus what to do. No, she's humble. She is hearing what Jesus is telling her about herself. She has a broken and contrite spirit that results in true salvation and leading many others who equally come to Jesus. We find this man... He is used to giving orders, and now he wants Jesus to come down. So different, by the way, than the centurion, the Roman soldier, the Gentile, who also has a servant that is sick unto death, and that centurion says, you don't need to come to my house. Just simply speak the word. Your word has authority. And for those of you who have been in the military, you know all you need is a commission. You need a set of orders. You need simply a paper that states what the mission is. And that's enough. You don't need the general to actually be with you. It wasn't necessary that Jesus physically be there. His word is what brought creation into existence. The woman who pled just to touch the hem of our Lord's garment. We want something physical. We think of, the, of uh, Mary and Martha when they said, Lord, if you had only been here, Lazarus would not have died. If that be the case, my dear ones, that means that Jesus, who is not physically with us now, we're at a real loss. No, it's his word alone. It's what he has said and declared. There's where the power is. The power is in the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So then Jesus says to him, and notice what he says, Then said Jesus unto him, Except you see signs and wonders. The you there is plural. While he's speaking to the man, he is also speaking to all of those who are in Cana. He is also speaking to us. Except we see signs and and wonders. What is a wonder? A wonder is a miracle. It is an event that occurs that only God could have performed. But it is a wonder that causes us to stop. It was what Moses saw when he saw a burning bush that was not consumed. It was a wonder. It causes us to drop our jaws and to say, what's going on? It's a wonder. But a sign is something that is a message communicated through the wonder. This is the only passage in John that that is used. The word belief is used 86 times in John. The real emphasis is on believing, but believing doesn't come by signs and wonders. It comes by the word of God. And so Jesus warns and says, you will only believe if you have signs and wonders but that will not bring us to faith. Many will say in the last day, as we find in Matthew 25, Lord, did we not in your name preach? Did we not do many wonderful miracles? Did we not heal the dead and cast out demons? Doing those works do not save us. In fact, Jesus said, Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Too often times in the body of Christ, we attract people, what we think, to church by light shows and drama and, and spectacular music and, and healings and signs and wonders. My dear ones, 
you don't have to be a Christian to perform signs and wonders. The Egyptian magicians did that. It is the Word of God that changes life, and it changes from the inside out. Notice what now the final verse is as Jesus speaks. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down before my child dies. He still doesn't get it, does he? He still is telling Jesus what to do. And too often in our prayers, we're telling God what to do. Oh, direct the doctors as they perform the surgery. Oh, Father, heal him. What we ought to be praying is, Father, help us to accept the trial that we're going through, that it might draw us closer to you, and that the one who is afflicted might come to faith in Christ. If we are healed only in the body, we'll eventually die. But if we're healed in our hearts, and we have a right relationship with God, we live to eternal life. That's why James says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Because trials, they work patience. And patience causes growth in faith. We trust more in him. This nobleman, he came to Jesus with a need. There's nothing wrong with coming to God with your needs. We all have them. But what are we asking for? Simply a resolve for the need? Or are we looking for, Lord, might I through this trial come closer to you? Might I grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus? I pray that's your prayer. I pray today that you're not so impressed with what you see, but instead by what you hear, and you're hearing the Word of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your Word. Thank you that it does bring faith. Thank you, Father, because it is your Word, and it transforms us from inside. We thank you, Father, for this illustration from a nobleman. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.